Hey everybody, I'm uh, Ken Wheeler. I work at Formidable and today we're going to talk about using React for things other than websites. Um, so does everybody here remember the first time you saw React? Uh, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. I was repulsed. Uh, and then I used it for a little while and I was like, this is the best thing ever. Um, really started enjoying it. I was super productive. Um, came to realize that components are the perfect way to describe and build almost anything, in my opinion. Um, so then a funny thing happened, React Native came out and suddenly I saw even more power in this abstraction with the rendering. Um, so you could write your React and then you know, target almost anywhere. Historically, when using JavaScript, you know, we'd write our HTML and you'd be like, hey, JavaScript, go ahead, do your thing. And it would operate on the HTML. Um, whereas with React, we, we own our output. And because we own our output, we can do what we want with it. Like strange things. <laughs> so let's talk about building some strange things. And now this theme makes sense. Uh, yeah, so the first thing I want to talk about, the first strange thing that I ever built with React was Spectacle. Um, this is a JSX-based presentation library. This talk is written in it. The talk prior was written in it. Uh, a couple of talks were written in it. So you, <laughs> you, uh, you write your slides with React. Um, it uses context for theming and control, and it intercepts React children and then renders them. Um, and so it, it doesn't just straight up render them. It'll take them, and depending on what's going on, it'll put them out. It's still technically web markup, so it's still technically a website, but I mean, it's not really a website. It's a presentation framework. So that was, that was my first shot at that. Um, another fun one is Victory CLI. You guys just heard about Victory? Um, funny story. Uh, Victory CLI lets you render charts to the command line. Um, the way that it does that is because Victory outputs valid SVG. Um, so that was actually super easy. Uh, you just render it to string and you're good to go. Uh, you can convert it to PNG and you know, if you're in the right terminal you can see it or save it. This one was cool. Uh, React Game Kit. Um, I designed this game. You can see the Extraordinarily handsome character. <laughs> um, I made it so jacked. <laughs> but uh, that uses JSX to describe game logic. Right? So uh, like, you know, most game logic is done via a tick. It's on a tick. So that, that timing gets passed down via context. And when you're making games, especially physics-based ones, um, you know, everything runs on the tick. So React Game Kit maintains an adjacent physics world with Matter.js. So you, know, you let all the physics stuff take place in there. And then anything in your React view that you want to do, it'll just sync up if you connect it. Um, so after after writing those, uh, I came up with it. Or I don't know if I came up with it, but you know, this thing that I started doing um, that I like to call the renderless component method. And what you do is, um, if you want to interact, you know, with an API that's not necessarily visual, but you still want to use React for it, you can just render a span. It's not going to show up, and the the good part about that is that you still get your lifecycle methods, right? So uh, the first one I wanted to talk about was React Music. So when I when I first wrote that, that's a that's a library to make incredibly dope beats with React. <laughs> uh, so when I first wrote that, I, I treated the component tree like a like a, a data structure, right? But when you change it, you know it, it doesn't update, right? Because it's just reading it the one time. If you're making hot beats, I mean you need the update to continue making beats. Um, so I used that, that renderless method, and it worked out really well. Um, you, know, you use JSX at the top level, uh, it uses the web audio API, playback sounds, do sense, you use context to phone back up the top, um, and it's got a central scheduler, kind of like GameKit. Uh, this common theme of context that is gonna break someday. I'm gonna be in real trouble. Um, so the last way, if you're doing really heavy duty stuff, is custom renderers uh, via injection method, right? Um, so something like React Native, uh, React Blessed, which is you know rendering to the terminal with React, or React Hardware, by the lovely Dustin Kasten, where you can control like Arduinos with React. Um, those are all uh, injection-based custom renderers. So you can inject overrides into React internals. Um, you can see here, like here's an example of uh, passing a custom component base in uh, using React injection, um, and then you're able to write your own renderer. Um, using this injected stuff, and it lets you do things like, you know, control Arduinos with React. 
Um, so for the future, I was going to make this awesome cowboy robot joke, but Tom Ocho Cinco snaked me on it, so <laughs> whatever. But the actual future is, uh, is with uh, fiber. There's going to be a first class custom rendering API, and I'm really excited about uh, some of the things we're going to get built with that, because it's awesome. Um, yeah, so closing out, uh, if you do build strange things with React, there's going to be people who are going to come to you and be like, yeah, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And uh, those people are dorks and you shouldn't listen to them. <laughs> Go build cool things. <laughs>